Hi friends and subscribers, this is Mahmoud Sheikh and from past few videos, I am working on developing an advanced filter application using PHP. In my last video, I completed the functionality of adding item. Okay, so when I click on this add button, I will be redirected to this page where I will be entering the customer name, customer mobile, item purchased and the price paid and the final is date okay so once i click on that add item that item immediately gets saved inside the table okay so here this is the table inside which i'm storing all the records okay so now if i want to view the records then i just have to click on this view details okay so here i have already designed this page okay so if i want to view last seven days seven days sales i can view it by just selecting the last seven days sales option and when i click on submit you will see only the record of last seven days that means there is only one record uh, in last seven days that's why it's displaying only one record because if i choose 28 days sales and when i click on submit it will display me five records okay so here i have completely uh, already done this okay so let me just go to the code and let us see okay so this is my index.php file okay so here this from sales and to sales okay so i'm use i'm using this script javascript script because i'm using date picker here okay so here I can select any two dates okay so for designing this date picker i'm i have to write this function okay so now next one is this one this navigation menu is completely same whatever we had seen when we were uh, designing add item form okay in our last video okay, next one is Next, we need to design a container, and then there is a H1 tag advanced filter, and then there is a button. Okay, so this add item button is will be taking me to the add item form, okay, which is this one. Cancel. Okay, so when I click on this add item, it will take me to the add item page. Okay, next, I have created a form. And I have set two attributes. One is action, and action attribute I have set to the same file which is index.php because I am sending the request to the same file. And the method post, which means I am sending a post request to the same page which is index.php. Okay, and then I have taken a field set, and then I have taken a row. Inside a row, okay, so here you can see this is complete one row inside one row i have divided this complete row into two sections one section is of four column inside which i have designed my uh, drop down and these two text boxes and in other section i have set up my table where i am displaying the data okay so this section is of four columns and this section is of eight columns Okay, so as you can see here this is four column section okay and now this is eight column section in the fourth column section i have a drop down label okay your choice label and then i have a drop down which is select to this select i have given a name as filter choice okay next I have a text box okay I have a label okay I have a label as custom sales which you can see here this is the label okay and then immediately after that I have two text boxes so first text box and the second text box okay so both these text boxes are of type date picker okay so I have set an ID from sales and to sales for form sales I have this ID I have passed to my javascript function this as you can see here to sales dot date picker and from sales dot date picker okay so the ids of from sales text box and the to sales text box i have used 
and have passed these IDs inside the date picker function. Okay, next I have taken a submit button and to this submit button I have given a name as choice. Okay, so this same name you have to use later on when you will be writing down the PHP code. Okay, so now my four section is a four column section is completely done. Okay, so this is a fourth column section. Okay, inside four column section I have a drop down, I have a custom sales label and then two text boxes of type date picker and a button and then on the right side there is an eight column okay eight column section which you can see here this is eight column section where I have stored my data of sales okay inside this section I have created a table so let me just see that okay so inside this eight column section I have a table okay with a class as table table hover and a table head inside the table head I have a first row which has the header which says what headers you have you want in your table okay so I want customer name customer mobile purchase item price paid and then purchase date okay so these are the five headers so once you complete your headers and then you need to start with your body table body okay so this table body starts here and it ends here okay and then table tag ends here and then this is due is eight columns due okay so eight column due has started here and it has ended here okay and then this this due is row and then we have a form okay Okay, next one is C. So inside the table body, I want to display the records, which you can see here. Okay, so if I click on last seven days sales, I can get only the details of last seven days sales. Okay, so I'm displaying the data inside the table. So what I have done is inside the table body, I have used PHP tag. Okay, so what I'm see, what I have done here is if the post request has been made when user select any whenever user loads whenever user loads the page okay I'll just load the page okay whenever when user loads the page I want to display all records for the user okay so as you can see here each and every record is displaying here okay so that's what I have done here Okay, whenever I refresh the page, I want all the records to be displayed. So this I have done with this if condition. Okay, so if is said if the post request is not made. Okay, so whenever I am refreshing refreshing the page, that means I am not making any post request. When I will be making a post request, whenever I will be selecting any drop down value, and when I click on the submit button at that time, I will be making the post request. But now when I'm when I'm on the index page, I'm not making any post request. Okay, so now I have not made any post request. In that case, I want to display all the records. Okay, so for displaying all those records, I have used an if condition where I have set if the post request is not set. Okay, so this is the choice. Okay, which you can see here. Our submit button has a name as choice this same name choice you need to pass here okay so which says if you have not made any post request then what I'm doing is I'm selecting the entire data from my filter table okay so this is my filter table and I'm selecting the entire data from this table and I'm passing this query to get data function okay so then I have made a function with a name as get data and to this get data function I am passing the query okay so where is that get data function let me just go to that get data function okay 
here I have created at the end I have created a get data function to this get data function I have passed an SQL query okay so this SQL query is this okay select star from filter this query will get passed here as a parameter to this function and that query will come here okay here inside this function okay and then I have included my database connection file okay so here I have a database connection file on which I have already made a video and the video is present in the same series you can watch that video okay uh, now I have included my database file connection then I have called my MySQL query function to that I have passed my database connection and then I have passed this SQL query okay and then I'm checking is there any data or rows or records available or present inside this table filter okay since now there is data present in the table it will return a value greater than zero okay so if my table filter contains data or rows then it will return a value of one okay so now in this case uh, now uh, as you can see here I have, I have assigned this to data and this data i am passing to my sql num rows function okay which tells me whether that table contains the data or not okay so now we come to know that the table contains the data then the control will come inside this if condition now since our table contains the data so one by one i will loop using while loop one by one i will iterate over each and every record present inside this table and i will get the data get the desired data and i will assign the values to these fields id information to id field customer name information to customer name field customer mobile information to customer mobile okay so now here at the end you can see how uh, a field as purchase date okay so in my table in my database table the format is like year okay year day year month and date okay the date is in the format of year month and date but here i'm displaying the dates in the format of day month and year so for that i have made a conversion here using the date function okay so i have converted this to date month and year format and then i am printing printing that date here inside the table okay so now uh, this get data function is over now okay so now whenever i reload the page it gives me the entire data which is present in the table that means i'm calling i'm i'm checking is there any post request not made in that case i want entire data okay and i have written that a query this query i'm passing to get data function and my get data function is returning me the data in the form of a row as you can see here okay is the row okay, so it's returning me the data in the form of a row and this row i'm displaying here inside this table okay so this is our thing about getting the data okay so the same thing i'm doing again here okay so now uh, all this about when user reloads the page okay when user reloads the page i'm getting the entire data i'm passing the sql query to get data function and then get data function will be returning the data but what if i want some specific data i want the data of last seven days okay so for that now i have made a post request by selecting whenever i am selecting anywhere any option from the drop down and when i am i'm submitting that means i'm making a post request so in that case i want the data of specific option i want the data of last seven days i want the data of last 28 days for that in else if condition i have set a condition as if the user has made a post request okay everything will be same choice of choice has to be passed here okay and this choice is the name of the submit button okay so now 
when user make a post request what i'm doing is i'm taking the from sales value i'm taking the to sales value okay so let me just show you that as well okay so now i don't want to get the data of these many options instead of that i want the data of some specific range i want the records of uh, of 1st july to 24th july okay so when i i will submit it will give me the records within that range okay so what i have done is whenever user clicking on any date okay whenever user selecting the dates like from date and to date i am storing those dates inside this from sales and to sales okay so now from to sales from sales and to sales whatever uh, what i'm doing is here the date is in the form of day uh, sorry month day and year okay the date is in the form of month date and year but my php my admin accepts the date in the form of year month and day okay so i need to convert the format to the format which can accepted by this php my admin okay so for that what i have done is i have after taking the date from the user which is stored inside this from sales and to sales i am converting that date in the format of year month and date so that my php my admin can recognize it and then i am storing those dates inside from sales and to sales okay and then i am using a switch control statement okay to the so, so that whenever why i am taking a switch because uh, based on the option based on the selected option of a user from this drop down i want to display the data okay if user selects 7 days i have to display last 7 days records if user selects 28 days then i have to select i have to display the last 28 days data if user selects 90 days then i have to display last 90 days data okay so whatever value user will be going to select this option value i am passing to this switch function okay so this dollar underscore post filter choice okay so this filter choice is the name of the drop down okay so this you can, as you can see here this name drop down name is filter choice okay so this filter choice i need to pass okay to my post request to my switch to my switch statement okay so and i have set a value of 0 1 2 3 4 up to 9 okay i have set the value of options from 0 to 9 and i'm using those values here in the switch statement okay so in the switch statement i'm passing the post filter choice okay uh, to check which drop down item user has select okay so this dollar underscore post filter choice will gives me the values different values of the selected options okay so if i select 7 okay let me just click on right click on them and click on inspect if i click on last 7 days then the value will become 1 okay if i select last 28 days then the value will be returned as 2 if i select last 90 days sales then the value return will be the 3 okay so that value i am taking and with that value i will be come to know which query needs to be executed okay so that's what i am doing here okay so now if case 1 okay so this is the value okay so if case 1 okay then i am executing sql query then i am executing an sql query which returns me the data of last 7 days okay and then i am passing this sql query to this get data function and then i am calling this get data function to display the records of last 7 days okay so now next one if i select last 20 days then the value which is uh, and the value for the last 28 days is 2 okay so now if the if the two enters inside the switch statement okay if the case two which means i need to return 
the records of last 28 days okay so when user select last 28 days option from the drop down then i will be executing this sql query and this sql query i am passing to the get data function and that get data function will gives me the data okay next like this i am passing different values to my switch statement and based on that value i am executing their respective query and i'm sending that query to get data function and then get data function will be returning me the data okay so that's what i have done for each and every option whether it is last 28 days data last 90 days data okay last 365 days data okay whether it is lifetime sales okay it gives me the entire sales whether it is only the day or whether it is the data of only this year okay only 2020 years data will get displayed and if it is last year's data then only last year data will get displayed and if i want to view only this month sales then this month sales will get displayed if i want to view last month sales last month sales will get displayed okay so the value i am passing to the switch function and switch function uh, i'm passing to the switch statement okay and then with the help of that value i'm executing the query using the get data function okay and at the end here for custom sales okay i don't want okay I don't want only the data related to these options. I want custom information. Okay. I want data of April to June. Okay. I want the data from April to June. So what I will do is I will select that range and then I will submit. Then I will get the data of only within that range. So for that, what I have done is I have kept that thing in the default section okay so whenever whenever user se select different dates and submit this SQL will get executed okay and then I am passing this SQL to this get data function and get data function will be returning me the data okay which comes under that given range okay so this is everything about filtering the data based on various date and the date ranges okay so uh, in this complete video tutorial series we have discussed how we can filter the data based on various dates okay so uh, I, that's all for this video guys i hope you guys have understood this how to filter the data based on various dates okay and here these queries are very important okay so uh, the queries which i have written for different purposes for last seven days 28 days 90 days 365 days okay and then for lifetime sales and then this year sales last year sales this month sales last month sales and custom sales okay so these queries are important in this tutorial okay uh, so that's all for this video guys i hope you like this video i hope you got some useful and valuable information out of this video if you like this video click on like button share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching